Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles and today is Thursday and I thought we'd start something new today. I wanted to kind of share with you guys a common way of displaying origami in Japan and that's using these things called shikishi. Uh, it's a board that is used not just for origami but for other art projects. Sometimes people paint directly on it, sometimes they do calligraphy. Uh, this is a really common thing to give, uh, kind of like in place of a yearbook. You, um, If you know somebody's leaving or moving away or going to a new school, usually a big message will be written here and everybody will kind of write out little comments of encouragement, kind of like a sun design design pattern to give to people as they leave. Uh, so lots of different purposes for this board, um, but it's a really fun and nice way to kind of make your, fine, you know, some kind of project you're working on just sort of finalized and pretty. Um, I'm just going to show you guys some ideas that I have of making kind of different arrangements and these can be so kind of just quick and easy and fun things that you can do uh, to make decorations in your home, to give as a gift, lots of different ways that you can use these. Now if you don't happen to be able to ha get a hold of these particular boards, these shikishi, you can kind of um, make your own. It's basically just cardboard and then it has um, a gold border uh, and then this layer of um, white kind of finished paper here on the top. So you could use some cardboard and uh, kind of improvise your own sort of version if you wanted to. Uh, just, it's it's not just card cardboard, it's, you know, a good solid um, board. Uh, you could use, um, oh, I can't think of the word I used to do photography all the time. What the heck is mat board? You can use mat board, that's what you can use. So, <laughs> but really seriously, even just using some construction uh, paper placed on top of some, um, cardboard can really create a really good clean result um, and you could put some like a binding tape of some kind or foil tape or uh, fabric tape um, any of the stuff that you might use in scrapbooking kind of tapes around the edge to create a border so that it gives a nice little finished look so that's me rambling I love goldfish. That's one of my favorite origamis. And I thought it would be really fun to kind of make a little setup here with these goldfish. Now, um, this is one of the traditional origamis that we've done. I think um, it's number 22. I'll put a link to it in the description. Both of these designs are included in that particular uh, uh, tutorial, so there'll be a little link to that. This is the same base of that helmet design from the samurai helmet, uh, and then made into a goldfish. So, uh, you know, we can just kind of arrange these on here, and then also include uh, this little tiny um, leaf pattern that I kind of made here. Um, and this is just some basic fold and cut stuff, and I've made, you know, quite a few of them here to kind of um, give myself a way to kind of add this decorative element to the display here and then some really thinly cut paper and um, I'll show you guys what I did here for this particular part. So uh, real quick let me show you guys just uh, what I did for uh, the leaf section here. Now the leaf came from just one piece of 15 by 15 centimeter paper and what I did is first of all I, I wanted to get this longer strip of paper to use kind of as the stem in the leaf piece that's in the underwater and uh, to do that what I just did is I went ahead and folded my paper into a big triangle and then the longest point in this paper is really this diagonal edge right here and so I just used my super good good sharp scissors to just cut a really thin piece right along the edge here and then you've got one piece there then that has a nice sort of seam to it which is cool um, you can unfold it a little to create this little piece here if I can get it to unfold <laughs> And then I also went ahead and cut again along that edge for both of these sides so that I wound up with three pieces. And then I used the remaining pieces to create these little triangles. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific size, but what I did was I folded my paper in half diagonally once and then twice. And really these steps don't have to be super exact. I kind of think it looks a little better when things are a little off and it doesn't, it looks a little more organic that way. But then fold it one more time and this gives you the shape, the size that I used. And then you can just cut all of these into pieces so that you get this little triangle shape like this. And you can get quite a few from it because um, there's, you know, 
total of just from this half, there's a total of eight uh, pieces that you can get from this. And I'm only using eight actually in mine. I thought that was enough. But if you want to have a lot of greenery in yours for your display, you might want to be using both sides of your paper, but that, you'd be able to get 16 leaves from just one sheet of paper. Now when you get this piece like this, what I did was start off just first by folding it in half. And I want to create sort of a um, kind of a fan shape. I've got the folded edge here on the right, and I'm just going to pinch right down here at the tip. And just go ahead and fold, I mean cut, excuse me, across here kind of at a slight arch. Coming right up to the tip and just rounding it out to the other side. So that you get kind of this little fan shape. And then uh, if you open it up for a second, you should get something that's almost a half circle. I kind of hold my thumb right here in the middle. I've got that crease there. I'm just going to go ahead and cut right along that crease, but not all the way to the edge, just to about where my thumb is. Close it off again with just that little bit of edge that you have. Fold it in half here. Get a good crease. Open it up again for a second and do the same step. Hold this your thumb and then cut here. This way you don't get any really wide branches to or wide leaves, little pieces. And then I can just hold here, and then with your scissors, if you just go ahead and do some random cutting here, and you really do need to have some good scissors to do this because you're going through four layers of paper, and you don't want to, you know, accidentally cut off anything, but if you can kind of randomly just cut into towards that uh, thumb and uh, try to make it, you know, as thin as you can because that makes it look a little cooler, but you get stuff kind of fringed like this, and then just delicately open things up. And you should get that cool kind of fan-like uh, leaf pattern that you see sometimes floating around in the water with goldfish. So uh, you can play around with the edges and kind of make them bent up a little. Um, or if you really want to, you could keep it super flat. I'm going to put my make mine a little more three-dimensional if I can when I do mine. But that kind of gives you how you make those little leaves. Uh, and like I said, I don't necessarily have a specific size just kind of following the steps I did to give you that nice thin piece of paper in the middle and then these other pieces uh, you'll get the triangle that you need there for that. Now the uh, the uh, goldfish that I used here um, are both made with 15 by 15 centimeter paper. Um, I used taunt paper uh, just because I wanted some really nice nice kind of paper for this. Uh, you do, so basically I just use three pieces of taunt paper that's 15 by 15 centimeters. And then you use one for the uh, leaves and then another for the goldfish, um, the two. So I've got kind of what I want for everything here with my fish and then my uh, little pieces of leaves that I want to lay down on the board too. Um, and then I just saw that I had a little bit of uh, really nice origami paper that features goldfish on it. And I thought, wow, this is so pretty and it would be really nice to be able to put just a little thin strip of it kind of diagonally cutting through my board uh, just to add a little bit of another dimension to things. And I really tried when I found my top paper, I tried to match as much as I could with this particular hue uh, to, my, to the fish that was in this kind of paper. Um, what I want to do is kind of create a piece here that uses the pattern that I have. And I really want to kind of include the pattern in it completely if I can. So I'm going to just kind of cut over here for a second. And this can be a fun way to use paper that you have that maybe you don't want to fold, but the pattern's really pretty. It's a really kind of fun way to do that. Um, so I've got my paper here and you can kind of see how I've got it kind of going through the uh, section of my paper. But what I want to do is I'm going to actually tear the paper to create sort of a fringed edge. Uh, so I just kind of figure where I kind of want to do this at. I kind of want to do it right along with the pattern that I have in my paper. You can change this depending on, of course, what kind of pattern you're looking at. But one thing that really works good for this kind of a technique is to just create a nice little fold here first. 
and then just tear along the edge. And don't really worry if things get a little off. It's a little better if they don't stay on the edge. You want it to be as kind of fun as of an edge as you can make it. And I'd you know say kind of encourage it to sort of go away from that side that you've got if you can. Just use the cut edge, the folded edge as a guide. But then you can kind of get a cool sort of finished fringed edge to things there. And then I'm just kind of randomly doing this as I go along, but you want to try to find a way to get making sure that we get to the whole edge here if we can. So I'm going to go ahead and fold right here too. And I'm just using this as a background image. You could use uh, paper like this and create like layers and depth of like creating like an ocean effect and stuff if you wanted to. There's so many fun things you can do with this. And there's a few different techniques for doing this kind of tearing of your paper. Some of them involve using kind of like water, but I don't want my paper wet so that I can still finish my project. But I'm just kind of guiding it along and taking my time as I tear so that I can get the edge that I want here. And I just made sure that the piece I'm working with is a little bit longer than my board is. And then I can cut and be more exact here for this as I go ahead and line it up with the edge. Now, I see, I like using edges that are already there so I don't have to worry about making any extra edges. So you can uh, go ahead and just fold down and match up to the other side. I'm just going to match up to that gold edge there if I can. Create a good crease and then use that crease as a guide to cut with my scissors here and get a nice clean edge so that that can just fit snug into this corner here. And then if I imagine just kind of bringing this down And then I can fold up here. And you just want to kind of fold as snug to the edge as you can, kind of following it. And then I can cut it down. And you really need to have good scissors when you cut washed paper because the fibers are in there and they like to get in the way of things sometimes. So I'm just going to match up again up here in that corner that I've got. Make sure that's sort of lined up, sort of up there. And then do this last one too. And it's okay if it extends a little beyond. You know, it doesn't have to be super exact. You want to try your best to kind of make it as close to that edge as you can, but. Now I'm just going to take some glue stick here and put a bunch of glue on the back of this so that it'll stick to my board. And you really do want to focus on the edges as much as you can. I'm going to get some paper here that I don't need. I can make sure I get a good, good amount of glue right on the edges especially. More important than the interior part really. You know, that part you can have some glue, but you really want to have that nice glued edge here too. And then just lay down your paper here and try to get it as close to those edges as you can. Nice. 
smooth that out. So we've got that cool little pattern sort of tearing through the middle of the paper. And then we can go ahead and work on how to arrange the rest of our design here. So the next step that I want to include now is I want to put in, uh, and you can kind of just lay your fish for a second if you want to, but I really want to make sure that I'm getting uh, the leaf down first and then the fish on top probably is going to be the best method. Um, I want to have a piece that kind of comes through from down in the corner and comes up. And I think what I was looking at before is that there my uh, strip is not going to be as long as I'd like it to come up to. I'd like it to come all the way up to here a little bit if I can. So I can just start first by having one of these little guys coming from the bottom. And it's good to have like a scrap paper here like I did here just to glue the whole thing down on there and then just use that. I'll try to put this one down here. To kind of create a nice little line here. And then I can continue the line. Pick like a good angle that I want it to be at. Trim that down. Make sure you just don't accidentally glue in the same spot on your paper here with this. You want to you might need ex lots of pieces of scrap paper to glue on top of if you're not used to using glue for small pieces like this. But then I can just kind of lay that along like so. And then I want to have one more strip kind of coming around here, this little guy here. I'm going to have that kind of coming down around like so. And I don't want it nearly as long. So I'm just going to trim that and then put that down. And then that will give me an idea then of where to put my leaves. And a lot of this can just be, you know, instinct of where you think things look good. You know, there's not like any rule. I'm just kind of doing what I think looks good. but. And when I'm done, I'm going to actually put my um, Inca or my little uh, hunkel or signature stamp at the bottom of my project. If you want to leave a space, you know, for where you can sign when you're done or something, that's always cool. Um, and then we can just kind of put some of these leaves that we've made at different intervals here to kind of create this underwater sort of environment here. And of course, the uh, fish will be on top of everything. So kind of just look at your spacing a little here. I'm going to kind of get that like that. There we go. That's going to look probably all right. And then just use a little bit of glue to kind of tack it down. And now, like I said, I think it looks kind of cool when you can create keep this sort of 3D. If you would rather it be really flat, then you can put glue on all of it. I'm just going to put glue right there in that middle part where I didn't cut so that I can still keep things sort of frilly. But that's just a point of preference of how you guys like to do stuff if you want to. Kind of alternating a little bit of how you know where they are. Don't need to keep it.
perfectly symmetrical. We should get something kind of like this. And so I wound up using uh, just seven of my little leaves. It's up to you guys of how many you'd like to have there for that. But, uh, and then as the little last bit, we're gonna put down the fish. Now the fish are, um, you know, I've already glued them together in the middle because when you make these guys, they actually um, are, you know, stick out pretty hard and big in everything. So I just want to kind of create a space here where I'm going to put them, find a good spot here. Kind of play around with which one you think will look better where. I can't decide. Once you've kind of figured out the placement that you like, you can put some glue on the back side. But uh, that kind of gives you guys the finished sort of layout design. Now, there's lots of different ways you can do this, of course, but this is just one of my suggestions for a way that you can kind of lay out your designs of some of the traditional origami that we've done. So I'll be doing some more of these as we go through the year, try to do stuff that's kind of timely, good for right now. And uh, yeah, I'll be sure to give you guys the uh, dimensions and such like I did today and the kinds of paper that I use. This is a great way to show off any fancy paper you have. So uh, I hope you guys can enjoy uh, showing off the stuff that you make. Uh, making the final version out of really special paper is always a great way to kind of feel like you've uh, finished something completely. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.